Danielle Bustamante, and I'm a 2021 COLA Visual Arts Fellow. My family was a creative family. We played musical instruments. Uh, my mom was very creative. I always like to say she was uh, the first installation artist I knew because she would uh, you know, do all kinds of things with decorations and family photos and that kind of thing. So I, I come from a creative family, but I never really saw myself as an artist um, until I left um, high school and I started in Fresno State as an agriculture economics major with a minor in pre-law. And I was really bored out of my mind, so I started taking these um, postmodern dance classes like Cunningham Technique and Ballet. And I went to San Francisco just to do a, um, a two-week workshop. And I ended up just moving there. This was uh, mid-80s, and I just ended up moving there, um, letting everyone know I was dropping out of school. I got a job at this place called the New Performance Gallery as the receptionist. And there was a, um, a performance series that was very, very well known then. It was called the American Inroad Series. And all the, you know, national and sometimes international performance artists came through. And so I had a really great access to them and an education around performance art and dance and poetry. I was still on the East Coast. I went in for a gynecological exam. And I remember thinking at the time when the speculum was inside of me, you know, God, do you think they would be able to make a better speculum? And you know that, that old saying, saying where people are like, they could put man on the moon, you know? <laughs> I really felt that way. Like they could put man on the moon and they can't make a comfortable speculum. You know, sort of literally like this idea of like the spaceship going through space and the cosmos and the aerodynamic qualities of, of these contraptions. But then having this object, which is called the duckbill speculum and is based on a, an early version by um, a person who, you know, had terrible practices with women. It just seemed like it was really out of touch with the medical advances. And so um, on the way home, I remember a design really popped into my head immediately. And I started thinking about this idea that's, I call it bloom because I think of it more as a flower, like petals opening or the idea, you know, of a hand, something that would be more organic and could spread out the pressure um, as it opens and, 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 and still give the medical access needed. I've been working with a really excellent um, visual artist named Jessica Taylor Bellamy who's been helping me with the drawings because of, of course I'm a terrible drawer. You know, most of my work has been in the realm of video and performance and installation. And, and so it's been a really amazing process. I would like to learn how to draw someday, but my main, <laughs> my main desire is to get uh, a good drawing of what's in my head out on paper so that I could begin the process of prototyping. It seems even kind of silly that as an artist that I would be moving into this area, but part of me thinks that, I don't know, it's like a form of activism, I guess, in a way, as an artist, just to see a need and, and want to work there. Um, and, you know, some of my work, my work, I guess, has a long history of thinking through issues around women's bodies. And sometimes that's making the body vulnerable. Sometimes it's about protecting the body. And now I am entering the body. <laughs> I guess I would like people to take away this idea that they can that they can try things that they're you know, maybe it's not like their expertise, but they could strive to make things better in their, their lives and lives of other people. And also I'd like to make it less taboo to talk about things like gynecological exams, um, because it's so necessary, you know, to save women's lives.